Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about a relatively recent discovery in regards to ourselves, but also in regards to the magnetic field of our planet Earth. So let's talk a little bit more about this unusual discovery that seems to suggest we can actually feel it and welcome to What The Math. So many times before, I've mentioned how important the magnetosphere of our planet is. It's essentially the biggest protective shield we have, it's also something that we probably would not survive without. But it's also that a lot of different species on our planet have learned to use quite effectively for various different needs. For example, to navigate around the planet and to find their place on planet Earth. And this is something that's not new to us, this is something that we've known about for many, many years. But the thing is, we keep discovering more and more animals that seem to possess this feature of being able to feel the magnetic field. For example, about five years ago, we found out that, turns out, dogs seem to prefer to poop in a very certain direction. And you may have noticed this if you have a pet, specifically if you have a dog, of course. When a dog really needs to poop, you may have noticed that they actually start circling around and kind of start placing themselves as if they were looking for a certain direction. Turns out, they are actually doing just that. They're looking for a north to south direction, which is their preferred position. They almost never seem to poop in the west to east direction. And we obviously have no idea why. This is just one of the more unusual examples, but there are quite a lot of animals that do seem to possess these unusual features. We actually refer to this as magnetoreception. And a lot of animals such as, for example, sharks, whales, and of course pigeons, rely on this for survival. And although we do understand to some extent how pigeons, for example, do it and how sharks, for example, do it, there are still some animals like dogs where we really have no idea what's happening. For pigeons, we know that it's inside their beak. There seems to be what's known as a kind of a magnetite-based receptor, this is actually magnetite, a magnetic rock, that's present in their beak that seems to indicate to them what direction the magnetic field is coming from. At least this is sort of how we believe it works. Something similar happens in sharks, but certain other animals seem to possess receptors in their eyes, specifically something known as cryptochrome. This is yet another way some animals seem to be able to perceive the magnetic field. But today we're not really talking about other animals, we're talking about us. Because it seems that humans also possess a very unusual way of detecting the magnetosphere, although we don't really know why or how. And all of this is based on this brilliant research, which actually is a follow-up to some of the research that was done a few decades ago. And the idea here is really simple. They took 34 different people, they put them into what's known as Faraday cage, which essentially protects you from any kind of electromagnetic interference. And inside of this cage, inside of this box, they were able to create a kind of an artificial magnetic field, which they could actually um, manipulate by rotating it around. In other words, think of it as a magnetosphere, but in a box, with an ability to change directions and to essentially rotate it in any direction the researchers wanted. But those 34 subjects also had something attached to their heads and essentially this was to measure different types of brain waves as the experiment was conducted. Even though the person here was always asked to sit still and to always look in the same direction, when the researchers manipulated the magnetic field inside the box, their brains seemed to have reacted to it and in the way that we usually refer to as stimulus response. Now here, the way it works is basically when you just kind of sit around and you idle and you do nothing, you think about nothing, your brain will start producing what's known as alpha waves, which are very specific uh, types of different waves that are usually around 8 to 12 hertz in frequency. But then suddenly, if you notice something or if you start thinking about something or if something catches your eye and you actually intensely focus on it, this is where your wave pattern will change. This alpha wave activity that you see right here actually kind of disappears and becomes a lot less prominent and is replaced by other waves. And the type of waves that they are usually replaced to are normally something like gamma wave, which is a little bit faster, it has higher frequency, and this usually indicates that the person is processing information or is engaging their memory and so on. Well, it just so happens when the magnetic field inside those boxes was actually rotated, approximately a third of all subjects experienced this change in different waves. Basically, the alpha waves went down, whereas the other waves started to become more apparent. As if they were literally experiencing the sensation of the magnetic field in their brains. And this is where it gets a little bit more unusual, because it seems that this is a genetic component. 
only one third of all subjects experienced it, two thirds felt nothing. Which actually does suggest something. It suggests that this so-called magnetoreception is a kind of a vestigial um, feature. Basically, it's something that used to exist in our ancestors, something that we probably used quite a lot, but we don't really use anymore. A very good example of this is how some people can actually use their ears or move their ears, very similar to how animals can do it, but not everyone is able to do so. This is a genetic component that's vestigial and does not exist in most people. Another really common example is something we all get, the goosebumps, which is a response that's actually kind of useless now. This used to be really, really important for when we had a lot of fur, but since for the most part we're kind of hairless now, at least don't have as much hair as we used to, this response is technically completely useless for humans. Which is what the scientists think is happening here as well. It's a response that probably existed in our ancestors who possibly used the magnetoreception for navigation or for some other reason, but it just doesn't seem to affect us anymore because we don't need it. And interestingly, the molecular biologists who read this study were actually not surprised by this at all. And that's because similar to how pigeons have magnetite in their beaks, we've discovered in the last few years that humans have a lot of magnetite in their brain, and we don't really understand what it's doing there or what it was used for before. And this magnetite seems to be present in pretty much most of the humans out there. And on top of that, our eyes contain cryptochrome, which is also very unusual. Now we think it's responsible for vision, but at the same time it can technically sense magnetic field as well. And what's even more interesting and I guess in some sense more comical is that last year the South Korean researchers conducted an extremely interesting experiment. They essentially took a bunch of starved guys, and here we're talking about men, not women, put them in a box, rotated the box around, and had them try to orient themselves towards food. The combination of hunger, blue light, and the fact that they were male allowed them to almost always accurately pinpoint where the food was located. And that is something that's extremely unusual and very interesting. But when the light was not blue, so for example when it was red light, or when they were not starving, or when they were women, they couldn't do it. It was only for starved males in blue light, which for some reason resulted in them being able to pinpoint where the food was after all. Now there might be some explanation to this, and there might be some kind of evolutionary hunter-gatherer explanation, but right now we actually have no idea why this experiment worked and what exactly it shows us. It does seem to indicate though that somehow blue light encourages our perception of the magnetosphere, and at the same time our instincts, specifically hunger, seem to encourage it even more. Or at least they do so if you're a guy. Doesn't seem to work for ladies as well. Anyway, so these are really, really important and also really interesting experiments because they do allow us to understand ourselves so much more. There are still so many new things for us to learn about our planet, the magnetosphere and of course ourselves. And studies like this do help us understand how we evolved and what all of our instincts and of course our feelings mean. But for now that's unfortunately it. The studies I mentioned you can find it in the description below, but until I discover more or until we learn something else unusual about how we can feel magnetosphere, that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, consider supporting this channel on Patreon because it does help me quite a lot, or alternatively, support this channel by buying the wonderful person t-shirt that I'm wearing right now that you can also find in the description below. Anyway, on that note, I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye.